going on guys? It's Matthew here with Gadget University and I'm here with a first hands on on the ice cream sandwich operating system from Android. Now this is Android 4.0 and what I have here is a Nexus S. This is not a Galaxy Nexus but this is the Nexus S last year's Google phone and I just installed ICS on here and I wanted to do a brief overview of what to expect whenever you first get your Galaxy Nexus or when you get the update for the Nexus S. So as you can see here the first login screen looks very similar to the Honeycomb operating system so you're going to connect to Wi-Fi. Um, I don't have service on this phone so I'm going to connect to my network and now that I'm connected I'm going to zoom in a little bit more for you guys this is not about the phone, this is about the operating system. So I'm connected, I'm going to hit next. And I'm going to go ahead and sign in with my Google account. Okay, so it is signing in as we speak. And it's going to take a brief moment to gather all the information from the Google servers. This is very, very much like the Honeycomb setup. I actually already have Google Plus. I'm not sure why it's asking me to sign up again. But I will go ahead and comply. It's very nice that they let you uh, sign up with Google Plus directly from the phone. Uh, that will give it a huge edge over other social networks like Facebook and Twitter. I can take a profile photo. Um, I guess I will do that later. And I'm going to accept the terms of a service and it is now backing up and restoring my data from the Google servers. And as you can see across the top, you, there's a lot of things that it did borrow from Honeycomb, but then it brought a little bit, thing, little bit of things from Gingerbread. Uh, some of the layout and the way it looks and the font looks a lot like uh, Gingerbread, but as you can tell, there's a lot of aspects like Honeycomb, like the faded black gradient in the background with the blue, and the cyan color in the top it looks a lot like Cyanogen Mod. Um, the custom ROM that a lot of people would put on their phones. Immediately you see I have a Google Talk message coming up and right now it is restoring Firefox. Uh, looks like it is pulling down some stuff. So far it looks very fluid. Um, just like I said, this is my first time trying it so I'm experiencing this with you guys. Um, first things first, let's start with the camera. I heard that they have a lot of new camera apps and we can practice with the camera here. And you have your settings right here, which is your focus mode. You can change the exposure, auto. You can actually change the picture size, and you can do the geotagging with the location. You can have the auto flash on and off. Also, they have this right here, which allows you to do mono, sepia, and negative. And you have a white balance, so I can change it to daylight fluorescent. And do the front facing camera. Let's see if that works. Oh, that works very good. You can see me looking rough. <laughs> okay, and um, you can do your picture library and also you can do the panoramic shot, which looks like it may not be compatible with this camera. Yeah, it locked up. Oh, so this is a good chance to look at the lock screen. Uh, as you can tell, it's a lot like Honeycomb. To the, right, to the left is the camera, to the right is the unlock, and you have that same Honeycomb clock that we're all used to. So I put it on the unlock, and it is taking quite a moment to unlock the phone. I'm thinking probably because it's going right into the camera, and it's crashing again. Okay, it's trying to do the panoramic. Oh, so it does work. Yeah, that pretty much crashes. <laughs> I can't expect that to work. I mean, this is a single core phone and uh, it's obviously a early build. But other than that, let's see here. You have a Google Apps folder. Folders look a little bit differently. Uh, of course, close that. You have your Google Plus, Gmail, YouTube, the market, videos, 
Let's see what videos looks like. Right now it is syncing in the background and that does slow down any Android phone, but this is a single core running in early build of so it looks like that works pretty well. Uh, let's see here. It's going through and installing all my apps, so this is going to take a while. I probably should do this later on. Hey guys, I'm back and I have allowed my Nexus S to fully sync up with the Google servers and pull all of my information down. There was uh, some hiccups with everything, mostly because of the fact that this is a beta ROM. Also because it was pulling about 20 to 30 apps from the Google servers. So I've gone through and deleted most of them and it is much, much faster now. As you can tell, things are a lot like Honeycomb. You don't have a vertical scroll app drawer. It is now horizontal. Uh, let's go through the Google Apps. Um, they really did a overhaul on the Google Apps. First, let's go to Gmail. And if you see, it kind of looks like a little mini Honeycomb version. I have the font set to very, very small only because that's just how I like the way it looks but you can actually change the settings in your uh, the font size in your settings and as you see it's a little bit more detailed you have a little bit more options down here things look a little bit better uh, you can add an email by hitting this button down here you can start composing immediately to your default email account you also have a new widget which is once again very similar to honeycomb it is a scroll scrollable widget and you can actually resize it And Google Plus has added some new widgets as well. You have a stream widget, which you can specify which stream you want it to show. And you have a photo widget, which shows all the uploads from your people in your stream. If you look at the app itself, it looks a little bit different too. If you hit the stream button, you notice the details across the top are a little bit different. Um, mostly all these apps have encountered some kind of UI change. None of these changes really are about features. Um, besides the widgets. Now let's go to the next Google app I wanted to show you which was YouTube. And if you go into YouTube you can see that the layout is a little bit different. Um, it's a little bit brighter, more easier to read. It's not so contrast with the black colors. And I did turn off the rotation on this on my settings because whenever I went like this or like this the resolution would stay so I would turn it horizontally and the resolution would stay vertically and uh, that's obviously a bug but of course that would only get better especially when the official one comes out video still play very quick um, as you see the volume bar looks a lot like honeycomb as well And other than that, there's not really any more functionality. Things look a little bit different. Things are a little bit easier to navigate. Uh, you have your account page where you can see your subscriptions and favorites and any playlist that you've created. You still have live wallpapers. I've changed it to this wallpaper. I think it's a little bit more, shows off the screen, the Sumer MLN screen much better. Uh, you have your bookmarks widget, which is again, just like the Honeycomb operating system. Uh, Google Music looks a little bit different. They changed around some things. Uh, it's asking right now if it wants to do my music beta, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. As you can tell, this looks pretty much the way it should have looked on Honeycomb. It's black with a cyan color all across the top, and as you can see here, it kind of details you know your different things, your recent artists, albums, songs, playlists. Down here, you can search for music. You can hit the menu button here and shuffle, make make available offline, display, settings, stuff like that. Let's see what we have in the settings. Uh, you can have it stream high quality, um, download via Wi-Fi. Yeah, pretty much the same settings here, nothing too much different. As you can see, it already started pulling my, uh, my music down from the cloud. Um, in the videos app, uh, you, I've showed you that earlier, but it does not work. You can actually just view the video you can't download it or anything 
it should pop up across the top saying that it's not available. Yeah, and I don't know if it's because it's an unsupported ROM. Most likely, that's probably why. Other than that, uh, let's go into the settings. The market looks the same. Books looks the same. Calendar. Let's check out calendar. That looks a little bit different as well. Looks like a better version of the um, honeycomb version. Once again, what they did is pretty much with ice cream sandwich is merged the best from honeycomb and brought in the gingerbread um, aspects a little bit. But this is uh, pretty much a whole new operating system. Looks very good. Let's go into the settings. And as you can see here, there's a lot of different things here. You have your data usages. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> you can uh, monitor how much data you're using. I've been on Wi-Fi since I've installed this ROM, so it's not really going to be very representative. Uh, you, of course, this has NFC on there. You can do tethering and hotspot. Okay, so what else can I show you guys here? There's not much else as far as these settings go. You can pretty much see that things just look a lot different as far as the layout and the UI. The biggest change would be the phone. Um, once you get your hands on a Galaxy Nexus, it's going to perform a lot better. I'm still not a, a fan of the Honeycomb new ice cream sandwich browser. And I would really like to play with it on the Galaxy Nexus. And it's mostly because it is extremely slow. Um, even on the tablets, it was not that fast. It was just, just took a while to render pages. And it does here too. Uh, no matter what you view. I mean, I've sat here with my iPhone 4, my iPhone 4S, the Galaxy um, S2, and I've just tried to um, do a browser comparison. And I know they're dual core versus single core, but I even did this with the Droid Charge, and it was the same result. Um, it just perform very slow things don't really render right I mean I thought maybe it was my website but they show fine on other phones so I'm not sure what's going on here but this browser is very robust you have tab browsing you can hit that as you can tell it's a little laggy still you can hit that and you have your your tabs which is very nice I love this part right here and then you also have uh, the settings it's kind of funny because the settings key does not work in certain programs and in certain parts of the operating system but as you can tell here I just hit it and it allowed me to access the settings um, but if you go here you can actually say pages for offline reading and you can actually sync this with your uh, Google account so it'll actually pull all of your I don't know why you want to invert a preview, but you can actually pull all of your bookmarks and history and everything from your Google Chrome browser. I find that to be probably its best feature. I love that feature about the, the Firefox browser, but I'm a Chrome user. I don't really use Firefox um, that at all that much. So I found it very cool that they finally put this on the phone rather than just the tablet. The camera doesn't really work very well. You can take basic pictures and video. Uh, still at 720p, but it crashes when you try to do any extra features like the panorama, uh, things like that. Other than that, guys, um, let me show you the Google Talk. I think that's the last one I haven't showed you. The Google Talk is pretty cool. Um, you can actually sign into multiple accounts at once. So you see here, you can see all of the accounts, and I'm actually simultaneously logged into them. So it's very similar to the Honeycomb one, once again. Uh, you have the icon over here if you want to uh, video chat with them you can also uh, do this hold on let's talk to my friend Allure and if you see here they have the, the voice recognition so let's say I'm gonna try this out for you guys tap that hey what's going on man how have you been I'm just sitting here doing a video for Ice Cream Sandwich on my Nexus S. I hope this comes out well because I really want people to buy this phone. That is amazing. Now, immediately I can tell you I like this much better than the voice 
recognition on the iPhone 4. Why? Because it tells me exactly what it's saying as it, I say it. So if I see a mistake, I can stop and go back. Not only that, you notice how I stopped talking and then I continued to speak? That is awesome because now you can, you don't have to really know what you're going to say. You can just say it. And if you have to pause or take a breath or sneeze or do whatever, you can do that. Um, with the iPhone 4, it, it, it's like it has to be a continuous motion like, like da, 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 da. And if it doesn't catch that, it's going to stop you and it's, it's not going to work. But I find this to be very cool because this is really accurate. I wonder if it recognizes if I want to say period. The iPhone 4 does or iOS does. Let's see if it says period. Hey, what's up? Question mark. How have you been? Question mark. I hope everything is going okay. Period. Yep. It works. That is pretty cool, guys. You see that? That is, uh, they've definitely taken it to another level. Um, the fact that it does it simultaneously while you're talking, that is awesome. Uh, you can still do voice chat. You can still do video chat, like I said before. Um, instead of your contacts app, it's now called People. And it shows you your most frequently contacted people. It, it automatically creates a favorite list for you. And as you can see, it pulls all your contacts here. You can sync them all up with your Twitter, Facebook, and all that stuff. Um, it pulls your, excuse me, it pulls your, your groups and everything. So if you want to message or email the entire group, you can do that from here. So little things here and there, little tweaks that I brought this to bring, to be a more complete operating system. Um, of course, right now, I don't believe this is ready for a battle with iOS 5, only because this is a dual core phone. I do think that ice cream sandwich has definitely put Android and Google on the same level of polish as iOS as far as apps go I've not been convinced um, even honeycomb had very few apps and I'm not sure if this is really going to be the end of fragmentation for Android I think it will be but that is only if Motorola Samsung HTC LG and every other manufacturer stops putting these third-party skins on the phone and they allow Ice Cream Sandwich to shine exactly like it is. As usual, thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe and leave a comment down below. I will see you in my next video. Peace.